Dr. Schultz, we're going to be talking about the recent updates that we've had in the year of 2022 when it comes to prostate cancer treatments. Um, I think it's pretty amazing to see where prostate cancer treatments have come as far as they've come in the last decade. And in 2022, we had lutetium come out. And so that was a, a huge hit for a lot of advanced prostate cancer patients because it meant that there was another option in the tool for oncologists. So can you talk about what lutetium is? I think the exciting thing to talk about first and foremost is that this is a treatment for men who have really run out of options. They've had chemotherapy, the chemotherapy is not working, they've had hormone treatment, the hormone treatment's not working. PSAs are rising, cancer is growing, and people have basically t been told that we don't have much more to offer. Maybe a clinical trial uh, would be an alternative. But uh, lutetium is a medicine, it's a type of radioactivity that's injected into the bloodstream, and it's smart enough to swim around in the body and find the cancer and deliver powerful radiation right to the cancer and kill it. And it works. Uh, it's FDA approved because they've administered this treatment to in a randomized prospective trial showing that the people that got the treatment compared to those that didn't, uh, the, the people that got the treatment lived longer. And uh, we've seen this with our own eyes. People with rising PSAs uh, who are resistant to all the other therapies will have a turnaround, a reduction in PSA, a disappearance of pain, um, and uh, really with Relatively few side effects. Uh, dry mouth is a common uh, accompaniment. You have to watch blood counts. But it's a simple injection given every uh, six weeks with uh, surprisingly good results. Not in everybody, but certainly certain individuals who have really given up uh, have turnarounds and regain their lives and, and uh, go into remissions, and it's very exciting. When it comes to sequencing, you know, for the audience, sequencing means the order in which drugs are given and approved. Usually, um, a lot of that is determined by insurance companies and how things are approved according to staging. But will lutetium automatically be the next step after chemo before clinical trials for every oncologist, or is this a new treatment and patients need to talk to their doctor about it and make sure that everybody's aware? The main issue driving those decisions is going to be payments. It'll, uh, I don't know how much lutetium is being, uh, what the charges will be. I'm sure they'll be quite, quite high. Right now, the uh, insurance is covering it for people that have had hormone therapy and it's not working, they've had uh, undergone chemotherapy. It doesn't have to be uh, a situation where the chemotherapy wasn't working. There just has to be exposure to chemotherapy at some point along the, uh, the pathway of treatment. That's where it's covered right now. Uh, there is a clinical trial showing that lutetium uh, prolongs life in people that haven't had chemotherapy. So the um, approval, the insurance coverage may start expanding to people that have become resistant to hormone therapy but who have not uh, had chemotherapy, although as of yet that's not yet established. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting. We It was discussed with Eugene Kwan in the September conference that patients have at least had to start one round of chemotherapy in order to receive um, Pluvicto, lutetium. So does it matter if it's Jevtana, if it's Taxotere, does it matter the duration of the chemo in order for a patient to be able to be eligible? No, it does not. Uh, so there is an assumption sometimes, uh, which is a mistaken assumption, that just like as hormone therapy has to have stopped working before you would be eligible to get Pluvicto, um, that chemotherapy would have uh, needed to have stopped working before you'd be eligible for Pluvicto. But that's not true. The way that the, uh, the verbiage is written uh, in the uh, in the, in the process of selecting therapy and getting insurance coverage is any exposure to chemotherapy. So in theory, you could just have a single injection of Taxotere or Jeftana, the two common chemotherapies that are used for prostate cancer, and that should be sufficient to uh, say, you know, it's been tried and uh, now insurance coverage for Pluvicto should be should be covered. And when it comes to staging, so one of the questions we had on a previous video that we did with lutetium was what if you have you have Gleason 9 prostate cancer, your PSA is really high, but you do a PSMA scan and they can't find prostate cancer nodules around the body, is it still possible to get Pluvicto then? Not even sure it should be given in that situation. So PSMA PET scans are a great way to ensure that the cancer in that individual has the PSMA molecule on its surface. Because if it doesn't have the PSMA molecule on its surface of the cancer cell, uh, then the Pluvicto uh, radiation will not have a way to latch on to the cancer. So it is unlikely to be effective, probably would be ineffective. So typically people will have a PSMA PET scan which uh, lights up 
uh, wherever PSMA is in the body. And uh, if it isn't lighting up or showing where the cancer is, then the plavicto is probably not going to be effective. How often does that happen? Oh, maybe one out of 10 patients is a variant of prostate cancer that's not lighting up with uh, PSMA. So for those 10%, would the next step be clinical trials then? Possibly. Uh, yeah, the, it's not a well-defined space in terms of what what do you do if hormone therapy and chemotherapy is ineffective? Cl clinical trials is a very logical consideration. If you have a person with a limited number of metastatic sites, maybe they could uh, just radiate them with beam radiation. There's other types of chemotherapy uh, that, uh, such as platinum-based therapy, carboplatin, which has activity. Different types of immune therapy. Eugene Kwan, you mentioned him earlier, did some studies with a medicine called Opdivo. And uh, his clinical trial became, got that close to FD, uh, approval. The p-value in his clinical trial was um, almost significant. So there's activity with those agents. Challenges are getting insurance coverage. And, uh, and certainly, like many cancer treatments, they're not going to work in everybody. But these are possible alternatives for people who have become resistant to chemotherapy. Let's talk about quality of life when it when you're taking Plavicto. Is it a pretty tolerable drug? Yes, quite tolerable. An injection every six weeks. Uh, as I mentioned before, dry mouth is probably the number one problem. Uh, if people have low blood counts from, from advanced cancer or from previous radiation or chemotherapy, then uh, Pluvicto could become a problem in lowering blood counts further. I'm talking about platelet counts and white blood cell counts and red cell counts. But uh, for the average mainstream patient, uh, those aren't usually barriers, and the medicine is quite well tolerated. So what does the PSA decline look like if Pluvicto is effective? Well, it can vary. Uh, I mean, the best, of course, is where you get a 50 to 80 percent or even greater decline from baseline. Uh, then you have patients who had rising PSAs where it will at least stabilize and maintain at a stable rate. And then, of course, you have the third category. Maybe a third of patients that undergo Pluvicto therapy, the PSA keeps rising, and it, it doesn't appear to be effective. So if the best case scenario is that there is a 50 to 80 percent, you know, drop from baseline, what time frame would that be over? The typical policy is to give two injections of Plavicto and recheck the PSA, and uh, that you would want to at least start to see some stabilization from the baseline PSA. That's the PSA drawn just prior to the initiation of the first cycle of Plavicto, and that if there isn't stabilization after two cycles, then you're probably going to have to think about changing to a different type of treatment. So that's like 12... 14 weeks about that? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I think that a lot of times when people are getting these treatments, a lot of it is, do I need to travel to a certain facility? So what does the application of actually getting the drug look like? Oh, it's very straightforward. It's simply an injection, an IV infusion, so there's no specific skills involved. If there are any skills involved, it's interpreting the results and making a decision about whether it's effective enough to stay on it uh, beyond the first two cycles. But the actual administration is very straightforward. And is it in almost every, most oncologists are giving it, a urologist giving it, is it only oncology? No, it's a form of radiation. So it would either be a nuclear medicine doctor or a radiation therapy doctor who would be administering the treatment. So as far as effectiveness goes, is it, I typically have heard that it's working in one third of patients. Is that accurate? I would say one third of patients have dramatic benefit. Um, I'd say another third of patients get stabilization of the disease, which is, people are grateful for that because it's not like we have a lot of options. So this is a pretty powerful update when it comes to our prostate cancer treatments and as far as the lineup and the sequencing and what's getting approved in the last uh, couple years. So are there any other updates that you see that have happened in either t the past couple years that have really changed the landscape of getting to Plavicto or even coming up that you think is worth mentioning? Well, as we've mentioned many times, the biggest breakthrough I see in prostate cancer in the last 10 years is the advent of these PSMA PET scans so we can see where the cancer is. This has um, opened up a fabulous opportunity for people that have a limited number of metastatic sites. Uh, the, the scans that we had in the past, the bone scans and the CAT scans, were only seeing big chunks of cancer, and we assumed that there were other smaller amounts of cancer scattered around the body that were flying under the radar. But now with PSMA PET scans, we have greater confidence that we're seeing most or all of the spots. And if there aren't that many spots, the radiation therapist can easily zap them with uh, beam radiation. It's uh, essentially side effect-free methodology, very effective. This is a 
been a great uh, opportunity for people who have uh, small amounts of metastatic disease to go into extended remissions, sometimes even go off hormone therapy, using this fa fabulous, more accurate information that comes from PSMA PET scans. So the, the technology, the radiation technology has been around, but we didn't have the, the radar to find where these spots were in the past. But now that we can see them, we can apply the radiation technology that we've had for the last 10 years and, uh, and treat people with a, essentially non-toxic therapy, and in some cases, uh, take people with metastatic disease and put them into extended remissions. It's very exciting. Is Pluvicto more effective if somebody has maybe 10 to 20 spots or if there's above? Like, is there a limit to how many spots that you usually see effectiveness with Pluvicto or do you see it more effective in oligometastatic um, categories? Well, I'm not using Pluvicto very much, if at all, in oligometastatic disease because it is so easy to treat those spots with uh, beam radiation and then reserve the Pluvicto for a more needy situation. Uh, there are studies ongoing right now to uh, determine if people that have a couple, three, four spots of metastatic disease and undergo radiation to those spots should, in addition, get Pluvicto for any possible microscopic disease that even the PSMA PET scan is not seeing. And that's a very interesting trial, very important that it be done. Uh, and what they'll be looking at, of course, is people being randomized. These are people that have you know, maybe two, three, or four metastatic sites to radiation uh, to those sites uh, without any Plavicto or radiation to those sites with Plavicto and then watch how those groups uh, play out over time and see if the group that got the early Plavicto as a uh, insurance program against other smaller micrometastatic disease that was unseen on the PSMA PET scan will do better over time. Uh, uh, is the Plavicto going after the, uh, the disease under the radar? Because there is still some disease under the radar in people that have had uh, PSMA PET scans. It's much smaller and sometimes it's not there, but um, we don't know yet if uh, adding Plavicto in that situation will be helpful, but that's a very important trial. Uh, we don't want to be giving Plavicto to people if it's not going to help them, but we certainly are happy that we've got this very powerful tool that might be an additional way to convert more of these oligometastatic patients into long-term remissions and cures. Well, that trial is very interesting. Do you know when the results will be out? I don't. I know that it's been initiated, but typically uh, these things will take two or three years for the uh, to accrue enough patients, and you have to watch them for a period of time to compare outcomes. So today we talked about new updates in prostate cancer, Pluvicto, what came out in 2022, and I'm looking forward to 2023 and further updates that we'll have. But I want to remind you of something that kind of sounds cliche. In fact, it is cliche, but I'm going to go for it anyway. Be bold and be daring. The reason this matters is because oftentimes when it comes to the doctors who are in front of us, we believe that they know more and sometimes we don't ask the questions, we don't ask about treatments that maybe they're not mentioning. And unfortunately, I think a lot of patients suffer from not advocating for themselves in those medical offices. So please advocate for yourself. If you don't feel like you can, bring somebody with you who can, who can ask those questions. If you need help on developing a list of questions or uh, even getting your individual questions asked from a non-medical team, you can visit our website, PCRI.org and talk to our helpline. Just fill in the contact info and we'll get back to you. But we're here for you. We love you. Thank you so much for trusting us and I hope you have a great week. Thank you.